Welcome to Unlocking Science. Our goal is to glorify God by studying and unlocking the secrets of His amazing creation. I'm Mr. P, and today we're going to be doing a hands-on episode with Dr. Jennifer Rivera. She's here to help us understand footprints. So in our Forensic Footprints episode, we talked about taking a cast of footprints mm -hmm. and being able to examine those. Mm -hmm. So this is our hands-on activity that you can do at home. And you can find the PDF for this with all the instructions in the description and get those, print those off, use them at home. Mm -hmm. So what's the basic process we're gonna be doing today? All right, we are going to be making a uh, cast of a footwear impression, all right? And so to do that, we use plaster of Paris, which you can mm -hmm. buy at the, any store pretty much. Okay. And we're going to use some type of hardener spray. So at home, you can just use some, any form of aerosol hairspray will work fine. You're going to need a sponge, uh, preferably one that has a little bit of abrasive on it or some type of cleaning brush will be fine. Uh, you're going to need some type of paintbrush, all right, as well. And you're going to need craft sticks, okay? And you're going to need water and then, of course, your uh, plaster. Okay, okay, so in the instructions, we talk mm -hmm. about you can do this inside the house. If you've got something like this, you can get a container, get some mm -hmm. loose soil from outside, and want it to be a little bit damp. Um, in the episode yes. that we did on uh, earlier this week, we actually did it's a little too dry and it didn't come out mm -hmm. well. And here's the impression, the footprint that we got here. You can see it's totally covered with dirt still. So we're going to, when we get done, we'll have something that looks like this and then we've got to clean it up. Mm -hmm. So I have stepped in this with my gigantic shoe yes. and we've, <laughs> we've made an impression here inside of the container. And if we look inside here, we can probably see some of these little round circles. These are characteristic of the shoes that I'm wearing. And then there's this little zigzag pattern so I can see a clear footprint line uh, from my shoe. And we're going to try and take a cast of this. Now, this would be used in forensic investigation. Mm -hmm. So we gather a footprint from the scene of a crime, and then we try to match it to a shoe. Yes. Okay. So we're going to show you the process of how you could do this. If you wanted to do this outside, simply go to maybe a garden spot or somewhere where there's mm -hmm. some bare soil, uh, rake any leaves and debris yes. away from it, any big rocks. Mm -hmm if you want to get a full impression. Yes. And then you can step in that and make a nice walkway. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's go ahead and show them the, the process of okay. pouring this cast. Now, Plaster of Paris sets very fast. So you're <laughs> going to have to work fast because you're going to feel it getting very solidified and you really want it pourable, but not too runny. So there's a, a fine balance yes. that you need to find while you're doing this. So a little teamwork so can gonna, also yes, be helpful. I'm going to hold this up. Go ahead and start uh, pouring that in. So you want to hold the bag from the top and you're going to use your other hand to knead it on the bottom. And what you want to do is you want to break up the plaster of Paris so you don't, uh, you know, until you don't feel any lumps. You want to keep kneading, keep pouring it. Let's get some more in here. Yeah. You want to get rid of these. Oh no. I think we have a hole in the bag. A hole in the bag. <laughs> Let's tip it over. This way. This way. There we go. Okay. Okay. This is a little runnier than I would like, but because it sets so quickly. It's very quickly, yeah. I'm thinking let's give it a try. Okay, mm -hmm. so we're going to get the corner of the bag and just very carefully. Making sure there's no lumps in here. Big old lump right there. Is there, you see one? Oh, I think we got it, yeah. Okay. Right. Okay. All right, so you want to start just above the impression. And what you want to happen is you want this to flow into the impression, not pour directly on top of it. Because by flowing into it, Mr. Paris, can you just need yep, that? Gonna, yes. Could you need that just a little bit for me? Okay. I think we can get. It's starting some of that to solidify already. I think. Oh, it's getting it's, a little clumpy. It's getting a little clumpy. Tricky to work with. Okay, so I'm pouring it into the other plaster. You're going to have to work really fast. And then we're going to have to get your mom and dad to help you too. All right. Okay. We well, got at gonna, least part of it there. We got part of it. And so what you're going to do is you can take a popsicle stick and you can just gently push carefully and cover more of that impression. Now, if you have a big foot like Mr. Patterson, you might have to do this in, <laughs> in two stages, right? right? If you have a little foot, you're going to be fine. There's okay? a towel for you to wipe off with. This now, is a messy process. It is so. <laughs> messy, so that's why it's good to do it outside or in a plastic box, <laughs> okay? 
Uh, now what you want to do is you want to just give it a little uh, some structure, support. Right. support. Mm -hmm. So you just want to take some popsicle sticks and you can just break them up and you kind of want to just put them all different directions. Uh, it's just going to give that a little bit of strength when you go to pick it up later. Now, if it's outside, you want to let it sit for like 30 minutes at least mm -hmm. before you try to pick it up. A warm day is going to go a little quicker than a cooler mm -hmm. day, of course. Uh, and if it's in this, if it's in a box that you do inside your house, I, you know, I would just let it sit there till tomorrow, yeah. like 24 now, hours. Now we would want to let this sit. The more we disturb it, the more we're going to disrupt the detail exactly. in the print. Mm -hmm. okay? So, so this over one, on the tray, yeah, go ahead and talk yeah, about that. Yeah, this one we let sit just 30 minutes, and it was, and it's still warm. Yes. Uh, because it's still setting, but in 30 minutes it was enough to, to at least lift out of the box. Okay, so, so let's talk mm -hmm. about a couple of cautions with this, some safety yes. things. Mm -hmm. um, the dust that you may have seen coming out of the bag, we want to try to minimize inhaling that. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then plaster of Paris undergoes a reaction, <clears throat> and it gives off a lot of heat as it's absorbing that water mm -hmm. and, and setting. So you would never want to do this in a way where you were submerging your right. skin or your hand or your foot into the plaster of Paris because mm -hmm. it could cause burns. Yes. So those instructions are laid out in the mm -hmm. in the PDF document as well. But it's perfectly so, safe to pour into a mold. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, you'll be fine. And mm -hmm. even handling this one when we just took it out, mm -hmm. we can right. feel that. You can feel it's warm, but it's not enough to burn you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's tomorrow morning, or it's been 24 hours from now. We've let this set and harden and secure. Mm -hmm. What are they going to do with this ugly pile over here? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so what you need to do is I would recommend taking it outside. All right. And so then you want to take your, your paintbrush and you want to try and get off as much of the debris as you can. All right, you don't want to dig into that impression, but look, you can see Mr. Patterson's, some of his uh, shoe print coming up right here, right? So you're going to brush as, you know, as much of the soil away and get it just right into the ground. That's why you want to do this outside, because it can be messy, okay? And you're going to clean off all the dirt that you can. And then what you're going to do is you're going to bring it back inside, or you could use a hose outside, mm -hmm. or if you have an, a wash tub in your garage or something. Once all the soil's gone, you're then going to take your sponge or some type of scraper and then you want to wash it under the water. Okay? And it's okay to scrape it a little bit because it's going to be hard as a rock. So you want to wash it, scrape it. You want to get off as much of the dirt that's inside these little details as possible so that you can see the pattern. See the pattern better. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. And if you go back and watch the episode, that Forensic Footprints episode, you can learn about the class and the individual characteristics right. that we talk about. So we've got an activity for you to do in that PDF document mm -hmm. where you can analyze a shoe print. Now you could make it extra fun. Mom and dad, you could set up some type of a crime scene investigation yeah. where somebody stole some brownies and you use one of the kids shoes to make the impression and, and make it fun and engaging that way. And then mm -hmm. of course, enjoy the brownies together yes, of after, course. <laughs> <laughs> after everybody's done. Um, and you can find lots of interesting things. Another activity we recommended is you could actually do this over a longer distance and try and look at some of the different characteristics mm -hmm. of our gait or the way that we walk. So all of these casts, we've got a few different casts here and the way that we wear our shoes, um, shoes actually tell us a lot about the way somebody walks and the way an individual moves. If you look at this shoe, um, you can notice back here on the heel, it's very worn on the outside of the heel and if we follow down lower on the shoe, we can see it's very worn over here on the outside edge, but not so much on the inside edge, especially back on the heel. So I could understand a little bit about how this person walks based on this pattern. And even in this impression that we've made from this shoe, we can see that that's the case. This big bump that we see right here shows us that there's a very deep impression over here. We call that the heel strike. Oh, wait, that's the toe end. I'm sorry, the heel strikes back here. I had the shoe sitting on it backward. And then it rolls across the front to where the big toe would be, and we get a big impression where the big toe is. And that's very characteristic of the walk of a human. And over here, we mentioned these different feet structures in the video. <clears throat> a gorilla's foot, for example, um, has its foot uh, oriented very differently than the human. So if you think about the big toe, on a gorilla, it sits out at an angle where a human's sits almost straight. Okay? And you can look at different gait patterns. So we're going to think about different things that you could analyze. So if you were to take several steps in a bare patch of soil or um, loose sand or anything like that, 
you could measure from heel to toe and watch those things and look at those prints, you could determine things like your stride length. So if you use a step counter, you could figure out how you walk, how far you walk in a day if you know the number of steps and the length of your stride, those types of things. You could also think about different gait characteristics. So if I were a gorilla, and I know I'm as big as one, but I'm really not one, but <laughs> their leg structures are very different than ours. They tend to walk with their knees out and that causes, and the way that their foot is structured, their feet come down on the outside edge very much. So they walk, when we walk like an ape, if we did an ape walk, something like that. Okay? When a human walks, our typical gait pattern is strike the heel, we roll around to the little toe, and then as we come forward, we launch off of the big toe. So we have a very different walking pattern because of the way God's built our bodies compared to uh, those other creatures. So you could look at different characteristics like uh, the supination, the pronation, those different things. So supination means your feet would come out like you're holding a cup of soup and pronation means they come, your ankles would twist in on your leg. So all of those different things are going to give us different characteristics of different people's gait patterns. So if you and I walked across the same stretch of soil, mm -hmm. I bet most people would tell the difference. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> I would leave a lot deeper impressions mm -hmm. because I'm a lot heavier mm -hmm. and my stride's probably a little longer than probably yours. Probably longer because you're a lot taller. <laughs> I'm a lot taller. So all of those things can be characteristics that we can use to identify. How might some of those things be used in crime scene investigation, some of those different characteristics? Yeah, so what we do is we look for what we call class characteristics and individual characteristics in the way someone walks as well as the impressions that we make. Uh, and so based on even the shoe print pattern that we see, or the shoe size. Mm -hmm. uh, we can eliminate certain suspects because of that. Uh, and also we look for those individual details that make each person unique. Uh, because two people can wear the exact same shoe, exact same size shoe, the same brand, off the same production line, and they will never have the exact same wear marks on those shoes because we are each individual. God mm -hmm. made us unique. Yeah. And the way that we walk is unique to us as well. Yeah. So it's really so, um, even something if you had a series of footprints, mm -hmm. you could even estimate the height of an individual. Yes, you based can measure the, the shoe size yep, and, the and shoe you can size. estimate how tall someone may be. Now, that's not always the case. There's always exceptions, yes. right? <laughs> Somebody's uh, running, but, you would be able to right. tell the difference in the impression exactly. and the impacts and all mm -hmm. those things. Mm -hmm. But if somebody who has a 5'1 shoe, like my daughter, we would know she's not 6'5 in height, right? <laughs> yes. Because <laughs> she wears a size 5 shoe, she's very tiny. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. And I wear a relatively small shoe. I only wear a 13 or a 14, and I'm 6'6. Six, six. Mm -hmm. So you would normally think somebody my size would wear a larger shoe. So some of those things can throw us mm -hmm. off, but it helps to give you a range to determine some of those yes. things. Okay? Mm -hmm. So you can do activities like that, create your own data table. You get to explore mm -hmm. and be scientists and understand the way God has made us to walk our different gait patterns now that word that was our big science word of the day in the episode and it's spelled g-a-i-t yes. it's not like the gate on your fence that you need to keep closed so the dogs don't get out but it's our our gait the way that we walk and all of those things you can get out and explore and understand more about them how they work together and uh, how these are used in crime scene investigation how we can tell different animal mm -hmm. tracks from one another uh, humans from animals all of those things can be uh, studied and just be inventive and creative and come up with some ways you can distinguish between different people mm -hmm. have multiple people walk through the same area and try to figure out whose whose walk uh, pattern matches which of the sets of prints mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. all right we'll hope you have the opportunity to uh, download the pdf and follow those instructions get into some of these activities and just study god's amazing creation and until we see you next town, next time, get out and explore all God's made for you.